Hello, welcome to the Final Cut Pro 10 Pass the Exam Like a Pro training series. So a lot of times I get this one question and I wanted to create an entire module just for this question. And the question is, as you see on the screen, is why get certified? Why should I get certified in Final Cut Pro 10? And that's the question I think everybody should ask even before you start to study, uh, before you uh, even want to take this course or any courses or buy any books or anything like that. So before we start about why I get certified, let me give you a little bit of background. So you have three levels of certification. The first one is the Apple Certified Associate. Now the Apple Certified Associate, and I'm going to go over exactly what this is in the next couple of slides, but this is the introductory level. Okay. And then you have the Apple Certified Pro Level 1. This is currently what I have right now. I have the associate and the level one. And um, at this taping, that this is a pro user who has reached you know a high skill level in the use of, of, of the software, but you'll find out more later. And then you have the Apple Certified Pro Level 2. All righty. So let's go over the Apple Certified Associate. So this validates basic entry-level skills in the application. And you can take this exam from your home or your office, all right, or your office or your home. You can take this at school, office, or home, anything like that. And it's appropriate for students or for college level programs. So a lot of my students in, in, in school, I give them this associate exam, all right? So this is an entry level exam, shows that you know the program and that you can basically get around in it. The Apple says that you can get around in the program. All right, now the certified pro level one. Now, this validates basic operational skills in the program, in a specific program. And now, this could be the same for Logic Pro or Aperture or any of these things. This is how Apple designates it. And then it, this could be taken after a specific course or at an Apple authorized training center. So what I did, I signed up at the time of this taping. The test was uh, $150. You paid your money. You went to the center. You had a proctor coming to log you on. Then you take the test. All right. This is this test was a little bit harder than the uh, the associate it had more questions, more detail. But it's still it built on what you already know in this on the associate exam. So if you can't afford it, I would say go for the associate first. Get the whole gist of how Apple words questions, learn how they uh, basically format tests, then go for the pro level one. And plus the associate you can take from anywhere. And then this one is appropriate for editors, teachers and trainers and uh, people who are in the industry. I think it's fine. Now, the pro level two, this is a, the test that I'm taking now. It validates a deeper operational skills as well as mastery of advanced features. So and it can be taken after passing score on the level one exam. All right. So this is basically if you know this program in and out, it goes in deeper about multicam, uh, it talks about uh, sound editing, you know, and, and things of that nature. So it's a, a deeper level that you would know. And now this is appropriate for advanced editors, teachers, master trainers. So this is the one that as of this taping I'm going for now. And um, and then there's another one after this to uh, take if you want to be a trainer. It's called a T3 train the trainer or something like that, where you go and you take another course with Apple. So what are the benefits? This is uh, another question I get all the time. So, you know, it comes down to one thing. If you're going to take this test, how am I going to benefit from them? And for me, uh, the big benefit for me is to really leverage the power of the Apple brand. And I think that if you know anything about Apple, their brand is very strong. Uh, it's, it's, it's a brand that as soon as you put the Apple logo on something, it automatically validates it and it's a weird thing when when and and, and i'm not going to say this as an apple fan boy or a fan guy or whatever you want to call me it's just the truth when you see an apple logo on something uh whether, whether it's a phone whether it's an ipad or or anything ipod you really think that it's quality made and if you have this uh, certification it really separates you through and 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 you're able to use this as branding and then you can separate yourself from others in the job market so in your resume, um, everybody knows that you're a video editor, but you can also say you're certified video editor. So you know exactly what you're doing. Now, I've talked to some employers, some employers said, I don't care. I don't want to see it real. It doesn't really matter. And that's true. And that is so true. But what I have also said to some employers, once you see someone is certified, you're 
resume may go in another pile where someone's who has a great reel as well as not certified go in another pile. So it's all depending on who's reading your resume, what time, who they need, so many factors. So I would never sit here in this presentation and sit and tell you that, you know, a certification is, is a path to any job. It's just a help like anything else, but you do need a solid reel. You need uh, solid references and just solid work. But especially if you're right out of college and you don't have that, it's really good to know. I think that is really good to know. If I'm an employer and if I see a student college or even high school that has this uh, um, this degree or this this certification, I think it impresses me. So what it's not. So we want to really talk about what it's not as well, because it's so important with this these any certification you get and especially uh, any government body that gives it what it's not. It's not going to make you become a better editor. I'm sorry to say, um, if you're a bad editor before you got a certification and you pass every certification and your work still stinks, it's still going to stink, but you know how to work the program very well. So I'm hoping that, you know, with my background and what I teach you, and what we go through is that I've done a lot of videos and uh, I don't think they stink. I think they're pretty good. And I think that what I've done is I'm showing you from someone who actually get paid in the industry to do work and to do all types of work, uh, knowing this can help you because it will help you not only keep some jobs, but you can also uh, differentiate, differentiate yourself from others. So it's not going to make you a better editor. It's not going to land you more jobs instantly. We all think of, well, if I get this, I'm going to get more jobs. That means I'm going to get more money. Uh, it's not necessarily true. It's still good to have, but you're going to have to get in this world, especially in the video production business. As you know, it is, it is everybody and their mother is in there now. Anybody who wants to be an editor, calls himself an editor, they are doing it now. And now with Final Cut Pro 10, it has really um, come down to the mere mortal. So you don't have to be you know, a seasoned 30-year, 25-year editor to get a, uh editing gig. So I just want to say it's not going to land you more jobs instantly. That's going to be on your network. That's going to be the other stuff. But it does look good. And, and you know, my, my big thing is perception is reality. And um, putting your Apple logo on your business card, on your website, or somewhere else on your Twitter page, it's, it's, it, it, the perception is reality. And, and like I said before, the Apple brand goes a long way. So what are the passing scores? So we're going to go over this. Really, the associate exam is 75% and higher. All right. So you need a 75 percent. And some of the questions, of course, they have some questions that are not scored, like some demographic things that are not scored. And um, the uh, pro level one is 80 percent. So this is interesting. And then you go down to pro level two is 75 percent and higher just because it's a little harder. Some other advanced features. And then you have one hour. Now you have 90 minutes basically to complete the pro level one and then and, and two actually and one hour for the associate level. So those are the passing scores for it. So there are a lot of different resources out there, books. Uh, you can Google a lot. I've helped a lot of people uh, pass this test. And I think that taking this course and going through this course, you'll see the test taking strategies. And the key is seeing how Apple answers the question, asks the questions and how you can answer the question in a correct way. Because it's not only how you use a program, it's how Apple wants you to use the program okay and that's i think that's key once you learn that once you get okay it doesn't make sense to me to do this right now but apple put it there for a reason so if they put it there this is how they would use the program uh, and i think and you have to watch the wording and i go over that in some other modules watching wording and and tenses and things like that and reading and test taking strategies to get that done there are a lot of people who will just give you a book and give you a pdf and say hey go for it go study but you really have to go beyond it to pass the test and to uh, to get these certifications so that's all why I get certified and now we'll go on to our next module right here on the final cut pro 10 pass the exam like a pro training series.